Welcome to our weekly podcast featuring CrescentCitySports.com and GoPreps.com. I'm Ken Trahan with my great friend Hunter Bauer of GoPreps, of course, the two sites you want to go to all the time for the best prep information you'll find in Louisiana on a day-to-day basis and doing it for the right reasons for the right people at the right time. Hunter, always a pleasure. Great to have you with us. And, hey, what a distinct pleasure it is to be able to talk about games and not worry about business today, right? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Thank you, Ken. Uh, enjoy our conversations each week. And, uh, yeah, we're week seven of the high school football season. It, it doesn't – it seems like it just started yesterday, um, but we're getting we're inching closer and closer to the playoffs. So those power ratings are starting to matter a little bit more now, and teams are trying to figure out where they're going to end up uh, November fourth or fifth, whenever the last day is. So uh, definitely an exciting time uh, right now in high school football. Well, it's great, and of course, some good matchups to talk about this weekend as we delve into Week Seven of the regular season. And let's start with an intriguing matchup. The the Veer versus the Veer, right? <laughs> Acadiana, John Curtis, the Reckon Rams lost their opener and they've bounced back and won five straight. The Patriots are three and two. Very, very rare to have lost two consecutive games. And the possibility of losing three straight is real. These two have gotten together in recent years and, you know, they split a pair of games. Ironically, Acadiana won in Metairie and John Curtis won at Acadiana. So yeah. here's a rubber match of sorts. Curtis winning last year and obviously having lost two straight, you look at it two ways. They're either vulnerable or they're mad or maybe both. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, looking at uh, Acadiana's schedule yesterday and I was going down figuring some stuff, it's crazy. A Veer team is leading the state in points per game with uh, Acadiana 52 points per game. And uh, John Curtis is not that far behind down that list. But uh, it just goes to show you how strong Acadiana's offense is and and really uh, what John Curtis has to look forward to. There really is no um, uh, break this week. You know, they have to forget those two losses over the last two weeks and and focus on the opponent ahead. I actually talked to Coach McCullough yesterday uh, from Acadiana, and he said this should be a good game. Uh, the normal keys are limiting the big plays on defense and the turnover battle. So they'll have to, they want to execute on offense, which they've been doing really well lately. Um, he thinks that uh, they'll be ready to play. And he said, you know, going down to John Curtis, uh, playing at the shrine is a big deal. So he just wants to kind of keep his team, you know, uh, keep their head on their shoulders and, and focused on the task. Um, but, you know, the big thing about John Curtis is, you know, they have such a young defense. Uh, offensively, they can't turn the ball over. They have to sustain those drives, uh, convert on the third downs to keep the drives alive. So, But they have a good quarterback, good running back. They have talent all over the field. I think this is going to be a really good game. Somebody asked me, is this going to be a high-scoring game? I said, well, you would think so since the two teams are used to scoring high this year and the KDN, of course, 52 points per game. But uh, I don't know. I, I kind of look for maybe a, little, a stalemate a little bit, maybe in the, fir- in the early going, uh, depending on how the teams respond to each other uh, coming right out of the gate. But Ken definitely should be the matchup of the week. Uh, you know, John Curtis wants to get back in the win column. They're, they're inching closer to, uh, to Coach Curtis's natural records. They really want to get that for him as soon as they can. Yeah, it's really kind of stalled because they had the game with Zachary canceled and then, of course, losing yep. the two consecutive games to Holy Cross and Archbishop Brummel. So, look, this is an even type of game, and I really thought this John Curtis team would be better than it was last year with all yep. the players returning, but hasn't materialized at least to this point, but you see the ability there. So, yeah, I think this game, frankly, goes either way. Maybe a slight nod to the home team just because they're home, although both – that's visiting right. teams have won the games in this particular series. Yeah, All right, a right. game up up north as we head to, you know, the the northern part of the state. Uh, Haynesville coming off of a tough game last week at five and one, hosting Arcadia, also five and one. So this is intriguing because Haynesville faces the tougher competition. Arcadia is five and one. Uh, the Tours lost last week. What do you think? Yeah, definitely it's going to be a uh, going to be interesting to see how Haynesville bounces back the old homestead for me. So it, it was tough to see them drop a game to Oak Grove. It it was even tougher to see Oak Grove scoring sixty points in a game. You would think Oak Grove right. and Haynesville getting together, it would be a low scoring game. But uh, you know, 
Oak Grove's Oak Grove. They're going to be good no matter if it's in the you know middle of the regular season or in the playoffs. So Haynesville knew what they were going up against. I think they had two block punts that kind of you know changed things around. And um, so I think you know had it not been for those two block punts, things might have been a little different. Oak Grove's still really strong though. Going into this week's game. Um, you know, I don't know. Arcadia is always tough. They always play District 1-1A opponents tough. They've always played Hainesville tough. So I think it's going to be uh, an, an interesting game. I think it's going to be a close game. Arcadia is led by Rotravius Jackson at quarterback. I think he's kind of a dual-threat quarterback. Uh, but Hainesville's ground game is really solid. Uh, they have Donnie Critton and Alonzo Jackson uh, on there taking the snaps. So And then Jackson's a really good key defensive player on that side of the ball as well. This is just a key game for the, the district one way one, one, a race, which I think is open right now. Cause you still got Homer and Glenbrook in the mix of all that as well. So, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be at Haynesville. So seven thirty start, uh, Arcadia is going to have to go. It's going to be a tough, that's a tough environment to play in. Uh, but Haynesville definitely can't take a break again this week. Yeah. Tough district, good matchup, common opponent, Glenbrook, of course, Haynesville beat, Glenbrook yeah. and Arcadia lost to Glenbrook. In the Baton Rouge area, you've got Central with a first-year head coach. After losing its opener, they've won five in a row, five and one. They're home against the Catholic Bears, who are four and two against a tough schedule. And I, I think we'll probably find out more about Central in this matchup than we will about Catholic. Yeah, absolutely. I wrote down in my notes, I believe this could serve as a trap game for Catholic if they're not prepared, but if Central wants to make a statement, they will have the perfect opportunity to do so. I was looking at this, Ken. Central has allowed seven points per game uh, this season, which I, I think is pretty impressive. Although Catholic has a tougher schedule than Central, uh, you, you never know going into these district battles. Uh, that, that's why they play these things, and, and I think uh, you know going playing at Central – uh, it's definitely going to be in their favor as well. But you never can count out, you know, the likes of Daniel Bill, one of the top quarterbacks in the state for the Bears. Um, that Catholic defense has allowed six points in the last two games. So they're playing really good right now. It's going to be a tough game. Uh, but, you know, a little common factor here, Coach Seminole, he was at Catholic. Now he's at Central. So he kind of knows what they do uh, a little bit. They know the players over there. So I don't know. It could be a toss-up or, you know, Catholic could come in there and, and, and show their willpower. It's just all going to be up to the Central uh, football team. And, and we'll, like you said, we'll see. We'll learn more about them this week. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, wondered why you leave Catholic for Central. Well, that was home for Coach Seminole. Yeah, and he, absolutely. He is home, of course, Memories linger, and I'm sure the Catholic side certainly will have something to say about that too, but both sides are good, both coaches are good, and it should be a good game. Franklin Parish, 5-1 and one at Tioga, 5-1. and one. This is a, a good matchup of two good teams that can score. Yeah, no doubt. I was looking through the uh, through the two four A schedule, and the, the, these two teams are also in a district with Neville. Uh, so I wrote down in my notes, a must see District two four A matchup featuring two teams that could challenge Neville for the league crown. One of these two teams could be challenging them uh, for that district title. Um, Tioga Blank Pine Prairie coming off its first loss of the season. Franklin Parish bounced back from a loss uh, to Union last week with a 19 to 17 win in district action over Grant. Uh, you know, you want to give the nod to Tioga. They've been mm -hmm. playing really well this year. Uh, they've been scoring a lot of points. They've limited their opponents uh, in, in a good majority of their games. Really don't know much about Franklin Parish. Uh, kind of looking for some some common opponents, uh, but I mean they they played a really good St. Frederick team. Uh, beat them. They beat Bastrop going up against Caldwell, who's playing really good right now. Uh, like I said, only loss coming to Union Parish, which we all know about Union Parish. It just seems like they're churning out running backs year after year there. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a, a interesting matchup. I see Tioga getting the win here, though. I think Tioga is going to challenge uh, Neville for the the district crown this year. I certainly feel the same way. Here in the New Orleans area, we've got a District 9-5A matchup. Brother Martin, who's a good football team, played a good schedule, 4-2, and two, taking on undefeated Holy Cross, who's become kind of the flavor of the day in this area, 6-0 <laughs> with, a, with a dynamic offense. And, you know, this is a really good matchup because you've got a dynamic offense against a really good defense. And, and again, Holy Cross has been great, but they've got to prove that they can beat Brother Martin because that hasn't happened in quite some time. 
Yeah, I'll have to admit, uh, Ken, I know this is uh, this is your area and you know a lot more about these teams than I do, but uh, you know, when I put my poll out last week after Holy Cross beat John Curtis, somebody asked, you know, why didn't you rank them higher? And I said, well, I said, much respect to Holy Cross. Beat a good John Curtis team, I said, but I want to see how Holy Cross responds after that win to John Curtis, against John Curtis. Well, I think they responded well. They they beat St. Augustine and uh, – you know, I think they have everybody's full respect going into uh, into this game with Brother Martin. So definitely, they have my respect now. So I want to apologize a little bit to Holy Cross, but they're they're playing really well. You know, Cole uh, Canatel is playing lights out right now. One of the best quarterbacks in the state. Uh, Brother Martin's defense has allowed an average of, an average of only two touchdowns this season. So their defense playing light. They limited Edna Carr to 19 points. I mean, come on, let's. I mean, let, let's put it straight. That's a really good outing for uh, for Brother Martin. So I see this game being really close. I think it's going to be a defensive effort uh, for both teams. Uh, but I don't know. You know, you, you can't stop Holy, Holy Cross right now. Can Brother Martin do that? Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to watch. Well, they won't stop them, but they have the ability to slow them down and make this a good game. I certainly expect that will be the case. Absolutely. And against Carr, you know, one of Carr's scores was a punt return for a touchdown. So Brother well, Martin really played well defensively against Carr. North DeSoto played in the state championship game last year, and they're traveling to Evangel to take on a rejuvenated program that, that's pretty good. Uh, Evangel has skill. North DeSoto has some skill. Both have good quarterbacks. Both are well coached. And again, you got one of those intriguing matchups because Dennis Dunn, who was the architect of the great <laughs> Evangel program, going back Absolutely. to his former home at Durant Field to take on the Eagles. So here we go. Another subplot in this one. Yeah, and talking to Coach Dunn uh, over the last few days, you know, he I, I asked him, I said, you know, how's this Evangel team? You've seen them on film. Everybody's seen them. He said this is the team they've been waiting on. Uh, most of those kids that are, are starting for Evangel, they've been starting since they were freshmen. So uh, they took their lumps over the last few seasons. Um, they have two losses early this season. Uh, but looking at it, they probably really should have beat Neville. That was a close game. Uh, Evangel's defensive front is good; is one as good as you'll ever see. Offensively, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, but North DeSoto's playing really good right now. They have one of the top offenses. I think they're behind Acadiana in points per game this season. So uh, they're able to score, score at will. Um, but, I mean, Evangel's much better than they have been over the last couple of years. Uh, everyone had pretty much written them off, and Denny Duran is – kind of brought them back into the picture. Um, I asked Coach Dunn, I said, is it weird going back to a place that you helped build? And he said, not really. He said, you know, I raised my, my kids were raised there. Uh, we, we had a special thing. He said, uh, you know, Denny Darn has my utmost respect, one of the great guys. And uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I want to give the nod to North DeSoto just because they're playing really good right now. But Evangel is such a tough environment. That's a tough environment to go into and play, uh, especially the, the level they're playing at right now. They have the Fulgham Twins. I was looking through the stats, Ken. The Fulgham Twins, and then you have uh, uh, Luke Delafield at quarterback. Um, you have several North DeSoto wide receivers in the top five, top ten of the, 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 the receiving leaders as well as Evangel. So offense all over the field Friday night is going to be a high-scoring affair. Right there with you. Right here in this neck of the woods, we've got Tara Bowen at 5-1, and one, taking on Destrahan, defending state champion, at 6-0. and oh. We're going to have that game live on Crescent City Sports, a Thursday night game. You can watch it live and via replay, always free, as we provide it to our audience. And, of course, Destrahan has been all that. Quarterback gets better and better. Running back's outstanding. Defense is strong as can be. Well-coached team. Tara Bowen has Division One players. And... They're physically gifted enough to make a game of this. Of course, Destrahan's a clear favorite, but maybe the two best teams in that league, although East St. John certainly has something to say about that. Your thoughts? Yeah, in, in looking at the district schedule outside of East St. John, I think this is going to be uh, one of Destrahan's uh, uh, toughest matchups. Uh, Terrebonne's off to its best start since 2019. I think this is their most wins since 2019. Only concern that I see is that all five of those wins have been against teams with two wins or less. So right. not really much of a challenge for Terrebonne. So, mm -hmm. again, uh, this will be one of those games where we really find out about a team in, in Terrebonne. Look, Destrahan is Destrahan, state's longest winning streak, defending champions. I could go on and on and on about Destrahan. The, the one thing that I really – 
uh, stands out to me about them is they've pitched two straight shutouts. They haven't allowed more than 11 points in a game this season, so defense is playing lights out. How's Terrebonne going to be able to respond to that? terrebonne has got a lot of great players. Destrehan has a lot of great players. We're going to find out uh, really, really, you know, how Terrebonne's going to respond with this game. Well, the, yeah, the Tigers have scored 40, 62, yeah. 45, and 56 in their last four, but now they're facing – if not the best defense in the state, one of the Absolutely. two or three best. Yeah. So, again, I think this is a measuring stick game for Terrebonne, and certainly for sure. hand has the upper hand here. Of course, a marquee matchup in southwest Louisiana in your neck of the woods with Turlings Catholic at 5-1 yeah. and one at LCA Lafayette Christian at 5-1. and one. Two dynamite offenses. I would expect to, that you take the over in this game. That's my guess. <laughs> and, again, you've got two really good quarterbacks yeah. here. You know, and Walsh and yeah. Johnson, obviously, and two offenses that don't figure to be stopped. I would simply a matter of who gets enough stops to win the game. Tackle number seven. I think that's uh, Turling's key to the game is uh, get to number seven, limit him. Uh, you know, the pass rush lane integrity is key. Uh, they have to finish every offensive possession with a kick. That's Turling's key to the game. They've got to stop Lafayette Christian. They can't turn the ball over. Uh, like you said, you know, uh, Juwan Johnson, one of the one of the leaders in passing and uh, rushing this season. He's he's chasing Brock Berlin's all time offensive record. So you know, definitely a lot of motivation for him. Uh, Turling's Catholic has has you know played very well this season. Um, this is going to be. I think for the district champ, well, you, you know, you still have St. Thomas Moore, but uh, mm-hmm. definitely could be for the district championship if somebody can slip up and beat St. Thomas Moore, which, you know, they're playing really well right now. But uh, it, it, any, if, if, if Turling has any shot to win this game, they're going to have to limit uh, Jawan Johnson, and that's putting a period at the end of the sentence. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, up north, Union Parish, 4-2, and two, Sterlington 5-1. and one. Farmers win – by eight last year, 29-21. But this is, these are two teams that obviously figure to go deep in the playoffs as they always yeah. do. And, and this is one of those testosterone games, I call it, because it's going to be a very physical yeah. game where they line up and who's better up front, and that's going to determine this game. Absolutely. I mean, and like I said earlier, Union Parish, it seems like they're just churning out running backs year after year. You know, how do you respond with uh, losing Trey Holly? Well, now you have Jamarian Island, uh, almost 1,300 yards on the year, 12 touchdowns. He's um, He's been their running force for them so far this season. Sterlington's going to have to focus on stopping him uh, in this rubber match. Union Parish took both meetings last year, once in the regular season, once in the playoffs, to eliminate Sterlington, uh, who was the defending champion. Um, talked to Lee Doty. He said, you know, he feels like they've played a really tough non-district schedule that's prepared them for this moment, for this big showdown and what – it's probably the big. It is the biggest game in Northeast Louisiana this week, uh, but he did say if we don't play like we did twice last year against them and don't turn the ball over, we may have a chance to be in the game uh, come fourth quarter. So, uh, it I think it really all lies on Sterlington and how they respond. You know, can they get the last two losses out of their head? Can they move forward? Can they stop Jamarian Island? Uh, we'll see. It's going to be a, a, a hard knocks affair. <laughs> And then finally in the Baton Rouge area, University Lab at 5-1, and one, Madison Prep 4-2. Yeah. This was a phenomenal game last year, 40-37, to 37, Madison Prep winning. Uh, U-High obviously really good this year. They, they got beat by Romo, but Romo's also beaten Curtis, so that's not a bad loss. Absolutely. And they're loaded. Madison Prep played a very tough schedule, two losses against very good teams. Uh, they're at home, but I, I think I, I kind of like U-High in this one. Yeah, no doubt. You know, Madison Prep's a very good team, big, athletic, well-coached. Um, you know, I was talking to Coach Martin from University Lab. He was telling me how, you know, they can't get caught behind the chains on offense. They have to be able to get their running game going uh, to be able to stop Madison Prep. But he did compliment uh, quarterback Tylen Johnson, who threw for 215 yards and two touchdowns last week, uh, and, and just how athletic he is. And he can throw it, he can run, he can pretty much do everything. So I think, again, limiting that quarterback in this situation uh, is going to be b- the big key for University Lab. But, yeah, University is just playing really, really lights out right now. I, I, I would like to take them uh, in this matchup. But, again, 40-37 to 37 last year, it's going to be a close game either way. Well, we certainly look forward to it. Of course, you can check out the Power Ratings Weekly and the Statistical Leaders Weekly at gopreps.com. 
And, of course, you can watch Destrahan and Terrible Live on CrescentCitySports.com Thursday night and the original 29th year Friday night, 6 p.m. to midnight coverage in the New Orleans market on 106.1 FM and, of course, five other stations across the state. And, of course, we have Hunter on to do some analysis in our countdown hour with Les East and Jude Young. Check that out. About 620 each and every week, including this Friday night. So, Hunter, let's strap it on. We're ready for another week. Can't wait, Ken. I'll, I'll actually answer the phone this week, I promise. <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk some football. But, yeah, it, it's going to be a great week either way. I mean, look at all these matchups we talked about. Get out there, go support those kids, and enjoy some great high school football this week. Hunter, thank you so much. Look forward to the weekend. Have a blessed day. All right, Ken, thank you.